One of the biggest challenges in growing avocados is getting consistent cropping. An avocado tree can produce up to a million flowers, but only 0.3% of those will set fruit. That's a crop of only three fruit for every thousand flowers. Plant and Food Research have been working on finding ways to improve pollination and fruit set rates for more consistent annual yields. Pollination scientist David Padamore explains. The focus of the project is to try and understand what are the factors driving the biannual bearing that we see in avocado production. So some years you get a lot of crop and in other years you don't. On top of that there's another cycle we see in New Zealand which we call irregular bearing, where some years we get a lot of flowers and we don't get any fruit. Uh, so we're really focused on that, on those conditions when you get flowers and you don't get fruit, to understand whether improved pollination in those years could improve fruit set and help to mitigate that uh, biennial bearing. Pollination of avocados in New Zealand is largely done through the use of honeybee hives, like it is for most crops. And so we started from a position of trying to understand how that was functioning. Were the honeybees doing their job? We also knew that avocados had an unusual flowering system, but we just didn't quite understand how unique that system was here in New Zealand. Each flower initially opens as a female, and that female flower is only open for an hour or two. And that's the entire period of time that that flower can be pollinated and produce a fruit. That female flower closes, and then on a subsequent day, opens as a male and releases pollen that can be used to pollinate other flowers. So this flower here is a female stage flower. You can see the central style sticking up, but all the anthers are pressed flat against the sides of the petals. These female flowers are now starting to close, and when they open it up again as a male, they look more like this, where those anthers are actually sticking up. The interesting thing about that cycle is you can get two different types of avocado trees. Some trees flower as female in the morning, close, and then the next day open in the afternoon as a male. And other cultivars, what we call type B cultivars, open as female in the afternoon, close and open as male in the morning the next day. So what you ideally want to do is you want to have an orchard with a mix of type A cultivars that are female in the morning with type B cultivars that are male in the morning. So you get transfer of male pollen from a type B cultivar to the Hass avocado. The traditional pattern that everyone quotes about type A opening as female in the morning, it was already known that temperature affected that and that at certain conditions that cycle seemed to switch. What we were able to do is using a system of cameras taking photos every five minutes over the entire flowering season, we amassed a data set of hundreds of thousands of pictures. We were able to track really closely how the opening sequence followed the temperature conditions. And what we found is the colder it got, the later in the day the female flower opened. So if it was a really cold night the night before, those female flowers wouldn't open until the late afternoon or even in the evening. And interestingly enough, on a good proportion of those nights, those female flowers then stayed open all night long, something that hadn't been known about before with avocados. I think there's a really interesting stream of research that needs to be done to understand how to mitigate those cold temperatures. Because not only does it affect when the flowers open, we know from other research being done on plant and food that it affects the viability of the flowers, it changes the rate at which the pollen tubes can grow through the female flowers, so it does negatively impact especially at really cold temperatures, on the ability to set fruit. So I think you know, we need to look at whether frost fans or other measures can actually raise the temperature enough on those really cold nights to ensure that you get at least some pollination occurring. We need to understand the cycles of receptivity of flowers through the course of the day so that we ensure that we have the right pollinators for the job. Each insect species has a different activity pattern and a different response to environmental conditions. And honeybees are fantastic pollinators, but they do have quite a constrained activity pattern. They sort of increase activity through up into midday, early afternoon, and then the activity tails off. And if we're getting a significant proportion of our days and springs here in New Zealand when the avocado flowering is actually pushed right back into the early evening, we need to look at pollinators that are active in the early evening. I think honeybees, they're a good generalist crop across many different species and the real benefit with honeybees is you can bring in vast numbers of them really easily. So the problem is that with some crops, the flower isn't really their top favourite. And so avocado really isn't favoured by honeybees, especially if you've got citrus or clover flower nearby. So it can be difficult to get sufficient bee visits. But the other real problem with avocados is that honeybee colonies are this highly structured social organisation. 
and individual bees will specialize on visiting either a male or a female flower. And so you get a whole bunch of honeybees that are visiting male flowers producing pollen and returning to the hive. And then you have another set of bees that are visiting female flowers and you're not getting sufficient cross-pollination. You're not getting bees traveling from a male flower to a female flower. And so that specificity in their behavior is one of the limiting factors. So we're really interested in other pollinators that might not show that same specificity. Uh, bumblebees are one. They are another social bee species, but they don't have the same hierarchical structure in the hive. And so an individual bumblebee is more likely to move easily between male and female flowers, switching between nectar and pollen gathering. And even more so, flies, they don't have a central place they're returning to. They just move pretty much at random across the orchard. And so they're going to be much better at cross-pollinating and moving between the male flowers to the female flowers. Ollie, show me bees. Show me bees. We've actually trained Ollie to detect bumblebee nests Bumble. underground. And if we're building artificial nests, we need to know what a real nest looks like. And so Ollie basically is trained to help us find enough wild nests that we can really characterize what they look like so we can build the best artificial nest. Good boy. Good boy, bees. Ollie, show me bees. When we saw the fact that we had these female flowers open all night long, when in, during the day they've only opened for a few hours, it really gave us pause for thought. Are there nocturnal pollinators that could play a role in pollinating avocado orchards in New Zealand? So we've done quite a lot of surveys. We've caught insects off flowers at night, and we've quantified how much pollen those insects are carrying. And we've found a real diversity of moths, crane flies, mosquitoes, gnats, uh, that visit flowers and carry pollen at night. It's very hard to quantify their role though. All our standard methods through the daytime don't work at night because we're altering their behavior so much. But I think it's early days yet. I think the first question we have to answer is whether there is sufficient fruit set that can occur at those nighttime conditions to make it worthwhile pursuing a nighttime pollinator. But I think what we do know is that a, a pollinator that's active in the early morning and the late afternoon and evening is definitely something that would benefit avocado pollination. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.